So as you guys know, we are very excited about the 2025 Toyota 4Runner, which is all new, beautiful design, amazing capability, sharing the basic platform with the Tacoma models. I'm driving a Tacoma Trail Hunter right now, and I also just drove the TRD Pro. And basically what I want to do is to kind of predict what um, 4Runner Trail Hunter might feel like on the off-road course by talking about it through the eyes of the Tacoma. This is going to be really interesting because not only am I going to talk about the new 2025 Forerunner in terms of off-roading, but I'm also going to predict how the new generation Forerunner might feel on a regular street, on a regular road, and also on a highway drive. So I'm going to do both, first the off-roading predictions, then the on-road predictions. So stay tuned for the whole video as I try to predict exactly what the new Forerunner is going to feel like on the road. So I'm going to be driving this uh, vehicle on a little creek here. It's a Tacoma Trail Hunter I'm driving. Um, but what I want to do quickly is to talk about the next gen, sixth generation 4Runner, which is based on a Tacoma and how it might perform on these kind of off-road conditions. Well, interesting thing is that um, Tacoma and 4Runner shares the basic platform more so than ever. And in fact, from B pillar forward, I was told by chief engineer that they're identical in terms of engineering, manufacturing, design, and so forth, except for the front grille, of course. But B-pillar backward is unique to 4Runner because it's SUV versus the Tacoma, which is a pickup truck. But in terms of the basic off-road capability, it should be very similar. And, and if the Trail Hunter model of the Tacoma can handle these kind of terrain, I can only imagine that the 4Runner will be just as capable and that could be the one of the most exciting thing about the forerunner is the fact that it has this phenomenal capability that just isn't possible with normal suvs okay now i'm coming through to some additional really extreme road condition again i'm driving slowly and because the stabilizer is disconnected the ride is comfortable and uh, stable. You're not jumping left and right so much, moving because the stabilizer is disconnected, allowing for better articulation. And this exact same feature, in fact, all of the off-road features are also on the 4Runner, either the 4Runner Trail Hunter or 4Runner TRD Pro. Uh, you can disconnect the stabilizer bar, you have a crawl control, uh, you have floor low and so forth. So. What I'm experiencing right now with the uh, Tacoma Trail Hunter and also the TRD Pro I drove earlier is exactly what I can expect to experience with the 4Runner as well. And I think the ride, the steering feel, everything will be very similar between the two models because they're basically twin models. One is SUV, one is a pickup truck. So this was a really fun little drive in the Tacoma Trail Hunter and I can predict and assume that 4Runner will be just as capable and will feel very similar. So now that we talked about the off-roading capability of the 6th gen 4Runner based on my experience driving the Tacoma Trail Hunter and Tacoma TRD Pro, what about the on-road experience or on-road performance of the new gen 4Runner? Which is most important since 95, 97% of the buyers of the 4Runner will likely use it as a daily driver and not take it through off-road courses. So we really want to know how it feels on the road, whether it's a city road or highway road, or maybe some gentle gravel road, how would it feel? Well, I'm gonna talk about it from a perspective of comparison to the fifth gen 2024 Forerunner, which is what I have right now. This week I'm driving the 2024 current gen Forerunner, not the new version. And we can then compare this one to the new one and talk about how the new one might feel like, especially from my perspective since I also purchased recently a 2024 Land Cruiser, which will be very similar to the new 4Runner more than ever. Built in the same factory, built off the same TNGAF platform, almost identical frame for that matter, and also similar or almost identical engine as well, other than the fact that the Land Cruiser only comes in hybrid, whereas the 4Runner can come in either hybrid or non-hybrid, but in both cases, it is based on a 2.4 liter turbocharged or cylinder engine. So everything that I'm kind of feeding on a Land Cruiser, or let's say 80% of it anyway, will likely translate to the new 4Runner as well, which is going to be a good news as I will explain in a few minutes. But also it's important to compare to this one, 
which is the current gen or now the old generation forerunner because many of you guys might want to know what you will end up giving up in terms of driving character anyway between the 24 and the 25 forerunner for first off the bat of course this one has a v6 engine still and i'm gonna just start driving right now which is four liter proven engine that is maybe somewhat gutless but super reliable and will probably last a lifetime and it's actually quite fun to drive in a sense that it gives you a lot of truck feel it doesn't give you a very good acceleration it's slow it's somewhat sluggish but it kind of feels like a tank it feels like a really good truck and that's what i do like about the current gen or fifth gen forerunner uh, so that's going to be gone the new engine is 2.4 turbo or turbo with hybrid depending on which model of the forerunner you buy and if my experience with driving the Tacoma or the Land Cruiser is any indication, then it's going to get better performance overall in a sense that when you step on the gas, there will be immediate feedback, uh, both in terms of acceleration and also just overall horsepower and torque feel. Because the turbo kicks in at low RPM, it maxes out at low RPM. So when you step on it, it's gonna take off a lot better. It's going to feel a lot faster as well. And so that would be the biggest difference you'll notice that I really like the 2.4 turbo hybrid on a Land Cruiser much more than I thought just because uh, you step on the gas a little bit and it continues to take off and it stays really quick regardless of the speed you drive. So I do like that. The 2.4 turbo without the hybrid, not quite as fast, not as torquey, but still feels more responsive than this engine. So even though it might not be as reliable as this proven engine here, in terms of just the driving character and driving feel, it is definitely going to be much better and it's going to feel better as well. It's going to be more fun to drive when you step on the gas. So that's the engine side. What about everything else? Well, it's going to feel quite different from all other aspects as well, because this fifth gen 4Runner has a really outdated transmission, which by the way, is pretty smooth actually, but still outdated compared to the new transmission, which has more gears, but also shift faster, shift better. And just between the actual gear shift, I noticed that um, it's almost impossible to feel the shifting on a new Land Cruiser or a new Tacoma because it's just really super smooth. Whereas the current gen 4Runner is a bit more clunky, even though maybe once again, this kind of old fashioned transmission could be uh, more reliable over long term, which we won't know yet. But I suspect the new 4Runner's transmission will still be built by one of the Japanese suppliers, perhaps Aishin, and therefore I suspect it's still going to be reliable. We just won't know that until much later on. And of course, with the hybrid system, you may or you may not know, but the electric motor is sandwiched between the transmission and the engine, so it's a whole different design from a normal hybrid. And is that good for the transmission feel? Yes, it's going to feel more natural compared to like a RAV4 hybrid system, which is quite different in terms of feel, but would it make the transmission more reliable? Once again, it's a little hard to say, but I suspect that um, it will be quite robust in the sense that the transmission, the electric motor and engine are all working together, helping each other. So the stress that you'll get in any one of those components will be less than some other system. So that's my prediction for transmission. I think the braking will also feel a little bit different. It's a bit slow in terms of feel on the 4Runner right now that I'm driving. So if I step on the brake like this, it's very solid, feels like a truck, feels like a tank, but I wouldn't say it's a world-class feel because the pedal range is pretty long in the sense that you have to step quite deep to uh, get the full braking effect versus a new 4Runner, which will be probably be similar to Land Cruiser or the Tacoma. And when you step on it a little bit lighter, the effect is much more stronger and I feel like it's going to stop better as well. So the braking will be improved, transmission will definitely be improved, torque and horsepower will be substantially better, especially with the hybrid. So those are all the positive things and I can add on top of that, even the suspension will be very different. So for example, this 2024 4Runner is very capable in terms of off-roading and on the road it's actually quite comfortable. However, when you go over some bumpy road, it begins to lose composure pretty quickly. You get that bit of oscillation and jittery feel because the suspension is old fashioned, again, proven and reliable perhaps, but it just isn't up to date as a newer model. So from Toyota, including the 4Runner and the new GX and new Land Cruiser as well, they all have a much improved suspension with a stiffer body, stiffer frame. And so I noticed that, for example, in the new Land Cruiser, but even on the new Tacoma, the oscillation from the road is better. It's not as bumpy and it takes the irregular road surfaces better and it's just overall a bit smoother. 
Uh, obviously on a Tacoma, it is even more bumpy than in, let's say, in the Land Cruiser I'm driving, because that's a pickup truck and therefore there's not much weight in the back, so it's going to always feel a little bit bumpy and light. Uh, but on the new Land Cruiser, suspension is beautiful, well designed, and the new 4Runner will share much of the suspension components with the Land Cruiser as well. Now that depends a lot on which model you buy, of course. The Trail Hunter as well as the TRD Pro have a different suspension setup than other 4Runner models. So they all are going to feel a little bit different, but give or take, I think they will feel a lot smoother and will take the bumpy road better than the 5th gen 4Runner which I'm driving now. But perhaps the most noticeable difference you're going to feel is the steering feel and the handling. Why is that? Well, first of all, this 4Runner has the good old fashioned hydraulic power steering, which is quite heavy, has lots of feel to it. You know exactly what's happening underneath the road because it transmits all this feel because it's a hydraulic system. And again, like I said, it's pretty hefty and it's weighted. So you kind of really feel the steering and I love that feel. And therefore I'm not as happy with the new gen Toyota models, which all have moved to electric steering and they're lighter, they're maybe quicker, but also numb feeling and I don't get as much of the road feel. So I can predict quite accurately that most likely 2025 Forerunner will also have the lighter feel. It might be a little bit more numb compared to the hydraulic power steering. You're not gonna get as much of the road feel transmitting to your hands compared to the hydraulic power steering. But there's not much we can do about that. The whole world moved on to EPS or electric power steering. So 99.5% of cars out there all EPS and none of them have a really good road feel and there's not much we can do. But one advantage of EPS is that you can dial in the actual accuracy and the predictable behavior of the steering using computer system and software and hardware as well. So you can make it more accurate in terms of feel and that is what's happening with both the Tacoma as well as in the Land Cruiser. The steering feels more accurate when I kind of point the steering to one direction. The vehicle goes there faster and more accurately and also overall steering accuracy is better. So. I'm going to say that the new 4Runner will likely have a lighter steering, less feel, but more accurate and more responsive. So depending on what you like in the driving feel, either you're going to like the new generation better or you might miss the old fashioned hydraulic power steering. It's a little hard to say. What I can say is that I will always prefer the hydraulic power steering feel. But having said that, the steering is a bit slow and not as accurate. So I don't mind the Land Cruiser feel because wherever it points, it goes there directly and it's really quick. Now, I will also say that uh, in the Tacoma TRD Pro and the Tacoma Trail Hunter, the steering is a little bit heavier than my Land Cruiser. So I'm hoping that the new 4Runner will be similar to Tacoma TRD Pro and Trail Hunter and have a slightly heavier steering than the Land Cruiser that I'm driving because Land Cruiser steering is pretty light. And that's probably one thing I really don't like about it. But we'll have to wait and see. Either way, you can expect a better cornering and more accurate steering, and therefore it's going to handle curves better. So if you're going through mountain roads or some curvy road, definitely a new 4Runner will handle better than this one because this old Gen 5th is really slow around the corners and it's almost scary at highway speed when you have to go through some curvy road and you're trying to turn quickly. It just feels like it's gonna tip over. And that's one weakness of the current Gen 4Runner. So that should improve a lot because I noticed on the Land Cruiser, which once again will be somewhat close to the 4Runner in terms of the design and capability, handles corners really well. It stays flat even though it's body on the frame. It doesn't wallow too much and it doesn't lose composure. So I think from that perspective, the new 4Runner will do very well as well. And so overall, what I can say is that both on-road and off-road, the new 4Runner will be more capable and more performance oriented than this fifth gen version. It's going to handle better. It's going to be faster. It's going to accelerate better, maybe even brake better. And everything will improve, but you will lose some of that old fashioned feel, kind of like the truck feel or almost like a tank feel. Some of that feel might be lost because the new gen models are always a bit lighter and it's going to feel a little bit more light duty, even though it's not lighter duty than the current gen. So those are some of the interesting comments I have. In any case, the new 4Runner will be very capable and it's going to be more fun to drive than, than this version. So I'm still looking forward to it. Would I buy the new gen 4Runner? I'm not sure since I already purchased the new Land Cruiser and actually I'm quite happy with it. But we'll have to wait and see exactly how 
the new Gen 400 will feel both on the road and also off-road. I just know that's going to be more capable and that excite me. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the new Gen 4Runner and how you think that might feel in terms of the performance and in terms of driving feel. So I'm kind of curious your comments as well. If you haven't done so yet, would you kindly give me a thumbs up and maybe subscribe as well because I have a lot more to share with you about many new models that's coming through the pipeline from Toyota for 2025 and beyond. Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.